right, hey you guys, it is Uzaki Swag, and I'm coming to you with my review of Korra, well, The Legend of Korra, chapters 6 and 7. I'll try to like separate them so you can tell the difference between the two. So I'll do the first one first, is chapter 6, Old Wounds. Okay. Am I... Am I the only person who fangirled when I saw Toph? Like, grown up in this episode, I was, I freaked out. Like, I jumped up and down a little bit. Not even gonna lie. This is probably, this and the original Avatar were probably the only two shows, only two shows that have ever, like, literally fangirled over. And I fangirled like crazy when I saw Toph. Because Toph was my favorite character from the original Avatar series. So the fact that they actually showed her in this episode, ugh, gotta contain myself. But this ep these two episodes were awesome. They are really stepping their game up with The Legend of Korra. So this, of course, this episode picked up where the last one left off at, where Lynn Bayfong was pretty much, she was trying to deal with like the title says, her old wounds. And um, Sue's like advisor, whom because he's a earthbender, he can sense when people are lying, he can sense when their heart rate increases, and he also does acupuncture. So he did some acupuncture on Lynn so that way she could unblock her chi because as we all know Lynn is very hostile she's a very hostile person in general so we never see her smile she's never happy she's always just bitter <laughs> which is really sad because she could be happy so he used his acupuncture and we got to see some flashbacks of Lynn and her sister when they were younger and they showed like Sue when she was younger she was really out there like she was hanging with the wrong people and they were like stealing stuff and all this kind of stuff and of course Lynn being a chief of police like her mother decided to try to step in and in turn her sister like stormed out of the room and left and then like Lynn started trying to reject her memories and she got up and she questioned Sue's um advisor saying like what did you do to me blah 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 and he said we need to finish this so they went back and they finished the acu acupuncture session and we also see that those two awesome like battle wounds that Lynn has on her face actually came from her sister which threw me off a little bit I thought I didn't I never would have thought that it came from her sister but I never would have known she had a sister if it hadn't been for these episodes but pretty much she got called because there were these people fleeing from a robbery and it turned out that her sister, even though her sister wasn't necessarily the one who did the robbery, robbing, she was the one who was driving the getaway car. And when Lynn tried to stop her, her sister cut the cord and it shot back and gave Lynn the two scratch marks that she is known for on her face. So after all of that, they showed Toph. They showed Toph. And Toph was talking to them and pretty much telling them that they need to calm down. She told Sue that she needed to get out of the city and like get as far away as she possibly could. And she made Lynn give her the police report so that way she, um, Sue wouldn't get charged for it. So Lynn just, she felt some type of way because she felt like her mom wasn't able to do necessarily do the things she wanted to because she was so riddled with guilt from having to deal with letting pretty much letting her daughter go for a crime that she did commit which kind of sucks but this episode was freaking awesome i was just i was fangirling all over the place because we got to see Toph. Toph's freaking awesome oh my goodness was not ready i really was not ready for that one but all in all in this episode we finally get to see why Lynn has so much animosity towards her sister and she confronts her sister 
and they looked like they were about to go at it like it was ridiculous but that was pretty much the end of this episode we also get to see um Korra learning how to metal bend like Korra learns how to metal bend which is freaking awesome but that's another that's for the next part so I'm gonna stop this one right here so now on to chapter seven original airbenders okay so well after Cora learned her metal bending and Belen and Opal had a moment we see ooh, the fight between Lynn and Sue was freaking awesome oh my god like you could tell they are daughters of Toph because they fight with just as much like fire and feistiness that Toph used to fight with which makes me happy because like I said Toph was my favorite character so the fact that they fought like they were pretty equally matched even though Lynn while she was fighting she like passed out because um Sue's advisor told her to take it easy after he finished with the and well after he finished with the acupuncture session and she didn't do so she was pissed and she went and fought her sister so after their huge fight opal pretty much broke them up with airbending by the way and we finally that was when like i said lynn passed out and then they cut to like i guess 16 hours later they said she was asleep for 16 hours and they went to go knock on her door and Lynn just like came out and she actually had a smile on her face. This was like the first time I have ever seen Lynn smile. And she finally she confronted Opal and she apologized and told her that she was sorry and that like being here with her sister was really hard for her because of all the things that they went through when they were younger. So but Opal forgave her and she pretty much told Opal that instead of trying to do what her mother wants her to do because she knew that Opal wanted to go to the Northern Air Temple to train with the rest of the airbenders, she told her that she needs to do what she wants to do because doing what she thinks her parents want her to do is never going to make her happy because Lynn, the reason why she became a police chief was to make Toph happy and in turn it didn't so she was telling her that she needs to do what she wants to do not what her mother wants her to do. And she did, and her mother let her go. So then finally Lynn and Sue became friends or whatever, or they finally made up. So and then also we see Zahir, that's his name. <laughs> Zahir, the leader of the Bandit of Benders. That's what I'm going to call them, the Bandit of Benders. And he pretty much threatened this truck driver to take them to the bridge and things went wrong and they like fled and then Zahir figured out where Cora was which was in the middle city with Sue and Lynn so they know where they are so I'm guessing they're heading towards them but they never say because that was the end of that episode and then we move on to this new ep the second episode <laughs> when pretty much long story short Tenzin didn't know how to connect with the newfound airbenders because they technically they aren't air nomads they just so happened to get airbending abilities so he was treating them like they should already know all of this stuff and he was trying to teach them about all of the air nomads and there are quite a few and he was trying to pretty much get them to be as apt about it as him and Janora are and they just weren't feeling it and Boomy really wasn't helping at all and I still fangirl a little bit over the fact that Aang named him Boomy after Boomy so that was freaking awesome but Boomy really wasn't helping and he was pretty much like pushing Tenzin's buttons but Tenzin well Korra told Tenzin that he needed to like step back a little and he said she said that he needed to ask Boomy what he thought that he would what he thought that he should do so that way Boomy would step in turn step up without actually knowing that Tenzin needed him to and then they could get things ship shape and doing so Tenzin went crazy like he was just ruthless with his teachings and trainings and 
this huge ob obstacle course and of course Kai was doing really well and he flew through it which doesn't surprise me but in all of this finally after all this harsh harsh training Boomy got sick of it and he quit which in turn made all the other people like start questioning Tenzin and Tenzin got mad and stormed off and then Janora tried to confront Tenzin about getting her airbending tattoo because she pretty much is just a talented if not more than Tenzin is because she has a, this amazing connection with the spirit world as well as being able to do pretty much everything that he can do because she is freaking awesome. Janora is awesome. So she got pissed and stormed off and Kai followed her of course and then they got captured which really doesn't surprise me by these people who hunt flying bison and flying bison are endangered so that just makes it worse because they are technically worth more so they got captured and Junora was able to send a message through a spirit to I think it's Boomji I think that's the name of Boomi's um, little like spirit rabbit and he was able well she was able to get them to help her so they all the airbenders came to her rescue and the main one who was complaining about getting his head shaved it actually came in handy and he was able to dodge a net while they were all fighting and stuff and then Kai Kai he got mad but you can tell that he has feelings for Janora because he almost like destroyed the leader of the like group of um bison hunters and, <laughs> and Tenzin was like you never like hit a opponent that's a defenseless opponent but he's like oh, that was good technique though so in that finally of course there was like a happy ending and Tenzin was like well I'll think about letting you get your tattoos blah 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 but still kind of worried I'm still personally worried about Zaheer this, uh, these episodes were freaking awesome Korra is stepping their game up. I think I said that already, but I don't even care because it's still awesome. This show is amazing, and I'm I'm just such a fan girl. That's probably why I think it's amazing. But I would love to hear what you guys think is going to be coming up because I think that Zahir is going to show up when they least expect it. Because Cora doesn't know what he looks like, so. It's not a good thing. I think that I hear is probably going to pop up when they don't want him to. And Cora, I honestly don't think that Cora is ready to face all four of them. And considering that the, I believe she's a firebender, is able to like shoot fire out of her forehead. She has to be the daughter or the granddaughter of that man that Zuko hired in Avatar. Because she has literally the same power, if not more powerful than he is. So she has to be related to him in some type of way or from the same clan or something. Because her power is freaking awesome. Oh my goodness. If I had that power, I would... Uh, never mind. I'm not even going to finish that sentence. So yeah, this the, these two episodes were awesome. As always, they never cease to amaze me. But anyways, I would love to hear what you guys think is going to happen coming up soon like especially with Zai the whole situation was I here looking for Cora so as always please remember to comment thumbs up and subscribe and this is Subaki Swag saying adios